Hey, what's up Stringlings? Welcome back to the channel and today I'm going to take another look at this guitar, the Hush One Silent Travel Guitar from Donner. Let's check it out. You might remember a couple of months ago uh, I was able to do a full walkthrough on this guitar, do a little bit of a playing demo, uh, actually before the guitar even hit the market, which was very, very cool. Uh, and it's got a lot of feedback and it's picked up a bit of traction since the NAMM show uh, in 2022. Now here we are at the end of September, it's been out for a few months, and I've had a few questions come in from viewers about various aspects of this guitar. So we're going to take a look at uh, answering some of those questions and at some of the design features that I think are really unique um, and really uh, make this a great guitar to own. So let's take a look. First question number one here. <clears throat> What gauge strings does this guitar take? <clears throat> so, I don't know what gauge strings it ships with. Guitar manufacturers almost never tell you what's on the guitar when you buy it. If it comes with strings on it, most of them do. Uh, but if I had to guess, I'd say this is an 11 gauge uh, acoustic set, which is pretty standard. I wouldn't necessarily want to go heavier than that. I guess if you're using it as a practice guitar and you're used to a heavier gauge uh, string for that kind of performance, maybe lean in that direction. But as far as this goes, uh, it's an 11 gauge set, um, or it certainly feels like it. And I would definitely recommend it for most people. Just kind of a good middle of the road acoustic set. The second question that goes along with that one is, what is the action like? <clears throat> now, the reason people are asking this question is because it looks like an electric guitar. So they want it to be an electric guitar, but that's not what it is. It is meant to be an acoustic guitar. So because of that, the action is slightly higher than you might get for an electric. And also that has something to do with the gauge of the strings, right? They're heavier gauge strings. So they're set a little bit higher off the fretboard, but it's very comfortable to play. As an acoustic, it's very, very easy to play this. Uh, it's not a challenging instrument to play. And I think that's really important that we remember you don't want your guitar to be hard to play. Okay, I don't understand where this idea came from that acoustics need to be difficult to play in order to make good sound. That is just not true. A well set up instrument, a well designed instrument should be easy and enjoyable to play, not fight against the player. Okay, so it, it should be ergonomic. Uh, and this one certainly is that. So that's something to keep in mind. Now, weird question that came out is, can I mount a pickup on it? I don't know why you would. Um, the, the person asking the question was curious because it's an ergonomic design in terms of um, being able to stash it away. Um, it, it's small, right? The, but this is the body as it transports and these are actually removable. I haven't removed them because I don't want to. Um, but these are actually removable, so it's very compact. And what they're basically saying is they want to put pickups on it to make it into an electric guitar. Well, the string spacing is a little bit weird because acoustics have different string spacing than electrics. Um, the fretboard is almost perfectly flat. It has very little radius to it at all. Uh, most acoustics, that is the case. Um, radius uh, is really more of an electric thing. Um, it's a very, very flat fretboard. But on top of that, if you wanted to mount, there is a, an output jack here. This has an onboard preamp, so it's an active uh, piezo system that picks up the vibration of the string and converts it into a, something that sounds like an acoustic guitar. <coughs> Excuse me. Converts it into something that sounds like an acoustic guitar. Uh, so you would have to pull all of that out and then mount pickups. <coughs> This is me fighting a cold. Um, and then what would you do with the electronics that are already on it? And on top of that, uh, you'd have to route it anyway. You'd still have to, to route it because the, the pickups wouldn't fit underneath the, the strings between the top of the body and the bottom of the strings. It's a bit, I don't know why you would do that when you could just get a headless electric. Okay, <clears throat> so here's another question. Does the Allen key mount the brackets as well as work the tuning pegs? And the answer is yes. So this goes to what I was saying before about design features that I really like. There's some engineering that went into this guitar and I think personally it's some of the best engineering I've seen in a guitar in a very long time. This is the Allen key that you use 
to screw on these two brackets, okay? Um, and they're just little nuts that go in there to hold it in place. It's the same Allen key you use in here, let me wedge it in there, to turn the tuning pegs when you're tuning it. So again, very um, simple piece of engineering. It is, I believe, the same Allen key you would use to adjust the truss rod if you needed to. Now this is bone straight. It's nothing wrong with the truss rod on here at all, but I think uh, you can use the same one because I'm pretty sure this is, this is the right size for that. Um, it's the only Allen key that comes in the box. So yeah, this one Allen key you can use for everything. I wish, <laughs> I wish that was the case for more guitars, but um, in addition, there is a slot that they've carved in here with a magnet inside it so that that Allen key doesn't fall out. It just sits in there and it's ready to go if you need to, to tune quickly. Uh, was asked, can you tune it just with your fingers or do you have to use the Allen key? Uh, the implication is that using the Allen key would be inconvenient if you had to tune on the fly. Um, you can turn these by hand, but they, they get to be very snug when you pull it into tune. So something to think about. Um, I would just go ahead and use the Allen key. It's honestly, it's not that inconvenient. It's right here. Okay. <clears throat> one question. Let's see if I have one here. Yep, there it is. So it does ship with a tuner and it's a little um, DT. I think it's the DT-04 that comes with it. It could be the DT-01. It doesn't matter. Um, just a little clip-on tuner, and the question was, where do I clip it? It has no headstock. So here's another design feature that I quite like. Uh, you can hang this on a on a hook or a nail or a whatever, right? So you you can hang this up using this little sort of pseudo headstock, but it does absolutely transmit vibration if you get it clipped onto the bar. It's not a problem. Now to some complaints that people have had. Why isn't there a tuner built into it? That's a good question, but take a look at how much real estate we've got to work with here, okay? Um, the preamp is in here. All of the electronics are housed in here. There's a little EQ, a phase switch, um, an input jack for your, uh, for your phone or your MP3 player and an output jack for your headphones. So you can play this uh, and play along with yourself and you can hear the acoustic sound. Uh, there's not a lot of extra place or extra room on here, sorry, to put a tuner. Uh, I suppose maybe in a future iteration they could do it because really the chip for the tuner and the display are only need to be that big. They're, I guess you could put one on, but it comes with a free tuner and it's under $250 Canadian you don't necessarily have to have everything on every instrument all the time. The tuner is right here. I mean, <laughs> you can get by without having one built into the instrument. Um, and in a similar vein, someone asked, what? No reverb? Well, again, like, what do you need reverb on this instrument for? It's a practice instrument. It's meant for convenience and travel. What do you need reverb on this for? Uh, if you want to get a really good IR or a really good plug-in that has reverb on it or you plug it into an amp. This is a quarter inch output just like any other guitar, just like any electric acoustic. Put the reverb on there. If you just want reverb in your ears, I mean I I don't know why that would make that big of a difference to what you're doing with it. Um, again it comes down to it's a sub $250 guitar which means it's a sub, uh, it's probably pushing around $200 US. <laughs> you're not going to get every feature under the sun um, and it is for what it is which is essentially what any of these are a block of wood with some strings on it right like that's that's what you're paying for and it's a very well crafted block of wood with some strings on it so uh, I don't think you're gonna find yourself disappointed that it doesn't have reverb um, just playing it as a guitar I don't know. Maybe, maybe that's maybe that's just me. I, I don't play a guitar and think, man, I wish this had more reverb on it. Right? This amp, yeah, uh, this little amp doesn't have a reverb on it, and uh, nobody's complaining about that. So, and this is a Don, the Donner DA10. You know, nobody's complaining about no reverb on that. So, just you know, use your use your judgment. If you want a guitar that's got 
everything you could possibly want on it, you're going to pay a lot more. Okay, this is a really great instrument. Uh, it does exactly what it's supposed to do, and it does it exceptionally well. Now, the final complaint I want to talk about that people have had, it's not really silent. You can still hear it. Well, of course, of course you can still hear it. So it's silent as acoustic guitars go because it doesn't have a resonating chamber. That's louder, right? That's louder because it's it's resonating into the wall and everything else, but also it's it's louder. This, this is as silent as you can get. If you want a guitar that is completely silent, and I've seen all kinds of reasons for it. Well, it'll still bother people if I'm... Okay, if it's still bothering people, you know, strum a little lighter, I guess. Um, if it's bothering people on the bus, you know, maybe, maybe just wait till you get off the bus. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what situations that would be too loud in um, as a as a practice instrument. Uh, it's a it's a strange complaint, but my assessment would be this: if you want a guitar that plays completely silent, completely silent. The only way you can do that is if you take a two by four and draw six lines on it where the strings would be. Then it will be completely silent. But as long as you've got strings on the instrument, it's gonna make some kind of sound. This is not. Like, is that if that's too loud, I, I don't know if I can help you, but. I mean, it's just described as a silent guitar because from an acoustic guitar perspective, it's a silent acoustic guitar. Done deal. Okay, let's take a look at a couple of little features that are kind of perks that I didn't really get into too much. This is the case that it comes with. Okay, It's very compact, as you can see. Right, Everything fits in here. And... They've engineered this to the nines. It's absolutely one of the best en engineered designs I think I've ever seen in a guitar. It it straps in here, so it holds the body securely at an angle and at the top with Velcro. The brackets go in here, and they fit perfectly. Okay. There is a little pouch on the top. Inside the pouch, you can put your tuner, of course, and your headphones. It comes with headphones. And they're really good. They're wired. They're wired headphones. But they're really, really good. Like, they're so good that they're actually in my uh, phone upstairs that I use for, for working out right now. They're, they're just really, like, they sound great. So you get a nice full sound out of the, uh, out of the Hush One when you're playing it. But take a look at just two more things here really quick first the handles on this bag are some kind of aluminum or, or metalized plastic or something that very hard very sturdy handles uh, and it comes with a shoulder strap but this blue I didn't even realize this when I took this all out of the package when you take this shoulder strap off they sneak this in on both ends. It's a guitar strap. So the shoulder strap for the bag doubles as a as a shoulder strap or as a, a guitar strap for the Hush One itself, um, which to me is just the most ingenious thing you could do to make a fully compact travel-sized guitar uh, and put everything into the oops, put everything into the tidiest package possible. So, honestly, for some of the tidbits that people are concerned about, things like not having an onboard tuner or reverb uh, and not being completely silent, if you want to play and practice acoustic um, and you don't want to make a ton of noise doing it, you're, maybe your kids are sleeping in the next room or you're just working out some parts or something, or in my case, working in a studio um, having the ability to get good acoustic sound without all of the ambient noise from the house 
is really difficult. This I can plug directly into my interface and uh, create really good acoustic tracks. Um, I can't say enough good things about this guitar. Uh, again, it's under $250 Canadian. And you, just, just go buy one, honestly. Like they're so cool and it's just the handiest thing to have around. You just grab it off the shelf and, and, and play you know, while the dishwasher is running or whatever, it's it's great. Um, yeah, so that is the Donner Hush One Silent Travel Acoustic Guitar. Um, go ahead and get one. Uh, they're very affordable. My Amazon links for Canada and the US are down in the description, along with the links to both Donner stores online. Uh, and those are all affiliate links and they just kind of help me out a little bit. If you like this kind of content and you want to see more, please consider becoming a member of the channel or at the very least subscribe to the channel and make sure that you like and comment so that I know what you're into. And uh, we're going to take a look at some more of these uh, Donner and other companies products in the next little while. So now that things are picking back up, I'm sure we are going to still see a lot more of each other through the end of 2022. So stick around. It's going to be a lot of fun. Have a great day.